months ago, launching a business podcast was just a dream floating around in my little head. The benefits were obvious. I could expand my reach, enhance connections, build authority and attract more web traffic. And it could all be achieved at a minimal cost. Yes, on paper, it seemed like a brilliant addition to my marketing strategy. But I had no idea where to start. The whole process felt extremely overwhelming, which led to months and months of procrastination. In today's episode of Marketing and Me, I wanted to share my tips based on my own experiences to help you get a podcast off the ground as well. Let's tune in. Welcome to the Marketing and Me podcast. If you're eager to grow your health and wellness business via effective marketing methods while maintaining your own health and wellness, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Leanne Shelton, health and wellness content coach and copywriter at Right Time Marketing. Today, I'm talking about starting a podcast. While I can't claim to be an expert on the topic just yet, I've definitely learned a lot over the past year or so. I think the catalyst that officially kickstarted my podcasting dream was meeting Tony Constantino, the WordPress guy, at a networking event. We were chatting about podcasts and Tony mentioned he had experience in editing podcasts. I remember then shoving my mobile phone into his hands, asking him to enter the sound equipment I needed and where I could get it from, because that was one of the key barriers that was stopping me. I just had no idea what I even needed. From there, I began fumbling my way through the podcasting process. I set myself the challenge to launch in January 2020 and then told everyone about my goal to ensure accountability. And then I did it, obviously. <laughs> I launched the Marketing Me podcast. After months of questioning, searching, purchasing, and downloading, the sense of satisfaction was indescribable. And it's easy to say it's been one of the highlights of my career. So are you hoping to get a podcast off the ground? If you are, here is a list of the basics to help you overcome the uncertainty I faced in the beginning. The first thing to talk about is the purpose and messaging. So you need to work out the purpose of your podcast. Who's your target audience? What needs or pain points are you going to address? So like for this show, my target audience is obviously health and wellness business owners uh, who are hoping to grow their business, but maybe letting their own health and wellness kind of fall down <laughs> because they're always focusing on their clients. So your show may not be serious. It can be lighthearted, educational, or maybe it's purely for entertainment. But you need this clarity up front to ensure consistent messaging. You also want to maintain your audience's expectations. The next thing to think about is branding, which includes logo and music. So don't underestimate the power of an attractive logo for your podcast. After all, it must stand out among the thousands of thumbnail images flooding the podcast players. Unless you have strong graphic design experience, I recommend calling in an expert for this point. You need to ensure the podcast cover art dimensions are 3000 by 3000 pixels and it's saved as a JPEG or PNG file. Look, personally, I did create a mock-up in Canva and then I actually went to um, graphic branding ex uh, experts, Mode Media, and they helped me just uh, fine-tune it a bit. So you could do the same. Now, to add personality to your show, uh, you require intro and outro music, reflecting both your brand and subject matter. Check out Audio Jungle or Premium Beat for some catchy tunes. Uh, the small fees involved, uh, nothing too dramatic. I think I maybe paid $50 or something for mine. But it can be a bit tricky to find something that reflects who you are and your audience. Uh, and you can quite easily go down the rabbit hole and be searching for ages and ages like I did. Uh, but get a few people's opinion. That's what I end up doing and just saying, this is who my audience is. You know who I am. Do you think this music reflects those? Okay, the website is the next thing to think about. 
Uh, now, unless your podcast is a passion project, I suggest adding a podcast tab to your business website. So for mine, I set up a new URL, marketingandme.com.au, and set up a redirection to my podcast landing page. So that's actually on the right time marketing uh, website, uh, like backslash podcast two. For some reason, I have to have the two there. It wouldn't let me change it. Anyway, you can find a list of all my episodes on that page. So the next step is to create a section for show notes. I use the blog section in WordPress, but you might set up differently. Now, just to just clarify, uh, the show notes should include links to individual episodes, background information, bios, resource links, and transcripts, uh, which is great for SEO, uh, search engine optimization, and giving your listeners a reference point. Just on the note of transcripts, that can be quite expensive to get all of your things transcribed. I personally just have transcripts for my solo episodes because I usually write my notes down. Um, if you can get transcribed, that's, that's actually pretty good, but it can get expensive, especially if you're, only, um, you're not initially making money from your podcast. The next thing I want to talk about is equipment. Now, in the current climate, it's probably best to set up a mini recording studio at home, uh, but this can be done at a surprisingly low cost. Uh, so I recommend purchasing the following recording equipment online. This is based on Tony's recommendations to me. So the microphone, I personally got the Audiosonic ATR2100 microphone with the USB connection. Don't worry, this will all be in the show notes, uh, which was around $159. So not too bad. Uh, then I got the boom arm, which is what it all, you know, boom arm. It's the arm that connects to your desk <laughs> and, and the microphone. I've got the Rode RODE PSA1 Professional Studio Boom Arm, which is around 130 bucks. Then I have the shock mount. Uh, I have the Knox, as in K-N-O-X microphone shock mount, which is around $36. From my memory, I think it costs more to actually get it posted um, and headphones sony mdr zx110 bce but actually that's just one idea of headphones i've got my bose uh, noise counseling ones uh, that's just so you can hear yourself and any background noise and so that could vary in price there um, now for all this equipment i have heard recently a lot of people are doing their own podcast right now so you might struggle to get some of these things online currently but just keep doing your searches and hopefully they come become available asap for you but you can work on the other stuff in the meantime and build it all up uh, recording and editing software is the next thing to consider uh, now it comes to this area the two most popular software options for solo episodes are adobe audition which is paid and Audacity, which is free. Audacity is A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. For guest interviews, Zencaster and Zoom are pretty good. Now, personally, I use Zoom for everything, my solo and guest episodes. Then ask the podcast VA um, to handle the editing side of things, which might be the best option for you too. Um, I, I tried uh, Audacity, but... It, it just sounded better when I did it in Zoom for some reason. And for consistency purposes, I figure I'd just keep it all the same. Uh, so it's totally up to you. The podcast media host is the next thing to think about. So this is one of the final steps in the podcasting process because this is basically the home for your show. I use the free version of Wishka which is W-H-O-O-S-H-K-A. But Libsyn, Blueberry and Omni are other great choices. This is where you upload your edited episodes and create an RSS feed link to share across iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Cast and other podcast players. You only need to register, register your show for free with each of these directories once. They'll then automatically update every time a new episode is uploaded to your host. And personally, this is one of my biggest few moments because I had visions of having to update, update all these things individually every time I, I update a new episode. So there's the key stuff. And in addition to the mentioned tips, I just like to add here a little disclaimer that running a podcast can take up a bit of time. 
I did most of this admin during the Christmas New Year period when things were a bit quieter. For you personally, this could be a quiet time right now, so it's a perfect opportunity. But also when you're in the flow of your podcasts, uh, I do them weekly. I've heard that weekly is better for maintaining momentum. But I do know people who do them less frequently, like fortnightly um, or once a month or six weeks. It's totally up to you. Uh, just be mindful of how much time you can dedicate to it. Uh, so for me, like if I'm preparing my own content uh, for my solo episodes, I like to write most of it out so I don't blab on. Uh, and for guests, I prepare questions for them, uh, you know, a bit of backwards and forwards sometimes, deciding upon the topic name and uh, and then obviously briefing them. And I have a little PDF with a bit of a background on my audience uh, what they can expect, how I run it. It's run by Zoom. You know, we, we first five minutes after they um, enter the Zoom chat, that will just be casual. And then I press record button after five, 10 minutes, knowing that they're relaxed, that kind of stuff. So that's something you uh, could probably do as well. Uh, I also know people who create like forms that they send out when uh, people show interest in their podcasts. And they can fill that out. So a bit of admin involved. And then obviously, if you are editing yourself, there's that element. I personally, yes, as I mentioned, sent it all off to the podcast VA uh, because I knew it just, I, it just do my head and if I tried to do that stuff myself. But to be honest, I don't have it heavily edited. I pretty much just have the music uh, added and have my, um, my intro, which I write later on, get that inserted as well. So I don't actually, as you know from my episodes, remove arms and O's and mistakes because it's just showing that I'm human. But anyway, I can talk more about this, these elements in a future episode. Let me know if you're interested. But for any other podcasting advice, I do recommend listening to Podcasting Tips and Tricks with Lyndall Harris. Um, that podcast show is great, uh, great for beginners. And Lyndall is the podcast VA who I've, I've mentioned and has been big help with making my podcasting dream a reality. I also recommend joining her Facebook group, Australian Podcasters Collaborative, which is a community filled with other newbie and experienced podcasters from across the nation and some overseas. And I admit to asking her many questions before I officially launch and they're all very friendly and um, it's a really great group, so I recommend that. Uh, now, I hope you're feeling a little less overwhelmed by the podcast journey ahead of you. So I wish you good luck with it all and just remember to have fun. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. You can find show notes for this episode at marketingandme.com.au. If you enjoy listening, please subscribe and leave me a rating and review on iTunes. You're also welcome to join the Marketing Me podcast uh, Facebook group where you can ask questions and discuss recent episodes with other listeners. If you're interested in connecting with me, feel free to reach out to me via LinkedIn to search for Leanne Shelton. And if you want to learn more about content marketing strategies or outsource it to me, head to my website, righttimemarketing.com.au. And until next time, I wish you good health and good wealth.